The book known as Hebrews is one of the books of the New Testament that is both rich and challenging for many readers. Um, the book is filled with images uh, that are taken from the Old Testament, whether it's Israel's wandering through the wilderness on their way to the Promised Land, uh, the images of the priests of Israel going in uh, to the sanctuary and offering up sacrifices to God, or the final chapters that kind of recount the entire Old Testament history, beginning with creation and all under the rubric of faith. The imagery is rich, but people often find it challenging, especially if they're not that well grounded in the Old Testament, and many of its images would seem strange and familiar. As a way of getting into the book might actually be to recognize that much of what the book is about is really covered in the final chapters. So if you're taking a look at Hebrews for the first time, you might want to take a look at chapter 1, but if you get confused, skip ahead to chapter 11, where the writer will talk about the nature of faith. This is the way in which the chapter begins. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. The writer of Hebrews is writing for people for whom life was dispiriting. They had come to faith, they thought, hey, this, is, uh, this message about Jesus is great, we have new uh, hope in him, and yet oftentimes life does not seem that glamorous as we're actually living it. There were people for whom faith was getting to be a matter of a long-term journey that didn't often have high spots and an exhilarating high on a day-to-day -day basis. That's where the writer of Hebrews talks about faith as the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, and then gives us a sense of who our predecessors in the faith have been. The writer will talk about people like Noah, for whom the word of God came to build an ark. He looked around, his experience didn't tell him that there was a flood coming, but he trusted the word, acted on it, and built an ark. Abraham was called to go from his country and his kindred and his father's house to the land that God would show him, to do something new. And Abraham embarked on a path of wandering, a long journey, without really ever having the sense that he had arrived. Even in the promised land, he never owned any of it gave examples of Moses, who was called to lead the people out of Egypt into a future that people had never seen, back to a promised land where none of them had ever been. Moses was leading a comfortable life. Why should he lead that? God called him to, and so he did. That sense in which the gospel message calls people into a future that they have not really experienced fully, but remains theirs as a promise, that's one of the great contributions that Hebrews makes to us. And to find a sense in which, in its pages, you find a compelling message about the glory of the hope that awaits us, which inspires people to continue persevering in faith, even when life seems more like drudgery than like glory. If the book of Hebrews can have that effect on readers even today, then it's having the effect for which it was written.